everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live here on a Wednesday. Amazing lunchtime. If you're watching us on YouTube, that's just fine. You can watch there, but the real chat is taking place at behance.net slash Adobe Live, where you can talk to me, Tony Harmer, and my fab guest with today, the amazing Sophia Emmerich. How are you doing? I'm good. It has been a minute since I've been on the stream. I realized this morning. It has. When yeah. did we do our we? Because we did the fir very first masterclass. You know, it was oh, you and I. That was. It feels we like did, years ago. We did like, the Pride poster, 2021 Pride poster. Oh yes, that is a year ago. It is it? a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> so my feeling of time is right. Okay, yeah, it's almost a year. It's been ago. a while. Anyway, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be back. Oh, it's so good to see you. I was so excited when Emma said, oh, Sophia's coming back with you on this. Yes, yes, yes. yes. excitement. Masterclass it is. It is, it is. And we're going to go backwards and forwards between the two of us today, right? You're going to yes. start off and then I'm exactly. going to carry on. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to do some joint magic today yeah. because I went to New York a few weeks ago and I work on a personal project, a documentary project. So what I'm going to do today is a little different than the stuff that I've done in the past. I'm not going to do skin retouching and all these Photoshop thingies that I've done mm. before. Just this time we're going to do some simple basic editing of photos that I shot outside in front of restaurants because the project we're going to talk about today and what we're going to work with today is a project about queer owned restaurants in New York City and all of them opened in the pandemic it's a very specific project <laughs> but... <laughs> i mean that is kind of just narrow down narrow down narrow down the thing there is, we are <laughs> i did not know that all of them opened in the pandemic that like i figured that out later on to be honest wow but, that, um, but i mean even so that's super coincidental no it is because i wanted places that nobody knows yet i, mm. I wanted to find places that are like small and new so mm. it's not something people have seen a million times. Yeah. So I kind of went into the social media, into the Google to dig up all these new places. And then when I talked to them, I figured out that all of them started in the pandemic because they all lost their jobs at the beginning. And then they decided to create their own places. Makes like sense. And bars and yep. stuff like that. So the project was basically going there taking their portrait and also talking to them about their like journey and what they want to do with the place and the space that they have and what community means and what creating a safe space means. Yeah. So it's a very documentary journalistic project, which I love to do. Um, and I will show you some of the images now. I have okay. six photos because I interviewed six people, no yeah. more than six people, but six places in general. Yeah. So um, I will go through, I will do a 30 minute edit of as many as we can do in 30 minutes, I would say. <laughs> yeah. And then I will hand it over to Tony and he will do a little magic with the addresses of the spaces and stuff like that. Yes. Let's get started. So indeed. while I edit, I will tell you a little bit about the people and the places so you get a little bit of an idea and i'm also trying to tell you what i'm doing <laughs> while i'm doing that so many things always forget that i'm bad at multitasking but it's gonna be great so we just opened the image what i usually do in camera raw is just to do this like the profile corrections and that it's not my lens correction and stuff like that that's all I do. I know someone in the chat named Tim is going to be like, why don't you do more editing in camera raw? Because I, I'm a Photoshop person and I do most of my stuff in Photoshop. But it's so powerful, Sophia. I know it's so good. It is good. It's more like I'm an animal of habit. I yeah. think I should, I should change it and I should get more into camera raw, but here it's we are. It's good to break habits, you know, every now and then. I know, I know I should. I will. Just saying. For the next one, we can try. I can try live. <laughs> there you go. That'll be so 2023. Here's where you saw it first, everyone. My next appearance with Sophia will be <laughs> getting to grips with light. And after and camera that, like raw. the next stream next year, I'm gonna be like, yeah. I'm editing only in camera raw now. There you go. All I do is camera raw. <laughs> okay, so this place, this person you see here is Jeremy. 
him. He's a lovely guy. Um, the, his place is called Aggie's Counter. It's named after his grandma, Aggie's. She's from Hungary. And he created a little like coffee shop, restaurant kind of thing with lovely like floral wallpaper. And it's a beautiful little spot. Um, and uh, he was the first person I interviewed and also photographed. So I thought this is a good way to start. What I would usually do, people that have seen my streams, is I would do any sort of skin retouching with documentary photos. I don't do any skin skin retouching unless someone has like a huge, I don't know, something on their face that is extremely distracting and does not belong on their face. Like this so beard. Far, <laughs> I will remove your beard from your photo. Um, so what I'm going to do right here, the first thing that I notice is that his eyes are pretty dark because the sun was coming from the top, of course, as we see. So I will brighten that up a little bit by just getting a curves layer, dragging the shadows up a little bit, not too much because then it looks completely unnatural. Yeah. And then I will invert, invert, invert. That's the word. Yep. Invert it and paint it back in. As okay. We do with the Photoshop, it's the my, my one of my favorite things to do. Yep. Um. Inverting masks and painting them back in, and that's the wrong brush. Oop. Okay. I mean, while it, while you're while you're picking your brush, of course. That, I mean, one of the things with with making documentaries right is that you do want to limit the amount of retouching you're doing anyway because at that point you're a journalist right you have to yeah. present things as they are absolutely i don't yeah. want to like alter the image i just want to make it so it like contributes to the storytelling yeah. um that's the main focus so actually when i went to these places taking the photos took like five minutes like I went there, all these people usually don't get photographed or have not been photographed multiple times before. So they're not super comfortable in front of a camera. So I'm trying to be as fast as possible and be like, this doesn't hurt. I'll be, I'll be gentle. Don't worry. Um, and I just want them to feel good with the result afterwards. And that's it basically, because it's not a photo contest. It's not actually about the photo. It's about the content yeah. in the photo. And it's about the people behind the images. And great. Also, am I the only person that paints back a mask and then realizes? No, no, that's a really, color? that's a good practice thing to do. That's, <laughs> you know, if, if you were doing it in Lightroom or in Camera Raw, what you could do is you could just go ahead and before you even started brushing anything in is, is just mess with the exposure so it's going to be really obvious where you're painting that is true then paint things in then tune it from there that so you're just true. doing it just a different way around but it's quite common to do that what you're doing yeah. is is not unusual it's good technique i mean and, for me it's more like from the dodging and burning technique i'm like ah oh, this yeah. is what i know <laughs> yeah so as you can see the only thing i did i hope you can see it is just like brighten up his yeah it's a little, nice little mid-tone lift and yeah yeah. yeah, it's not much. Um, I think if I would go, if it's more than it looks unnatural, then he looks like a reverse panda with like mm. the eyes are too, too, too bright. And then I also realized I don't like the crop because I don't like that we can see this paper here on the side. Mm -hmm. Draw. I don't like that. Then I want to interesting your choice of grid so you've chosen to use sort of a, a squared grid i always use four by five yeah five by four Mostly you don't ever use a rule of thirds no you don't it's usually first it started because it's the instagram preferred right size and yep. then every time i have to hand in something to a magazine that's also the size they ask for ah. they want four by five so i just that's what I stuck with, kind of. Um, I think I might try, mm, should I remove this thing? Okay, no, this will take too long. But usually I would probably remove this sign here because it's annoying me, but um, mm. it's, it's a little bit more <laughs> of like actual, <laughs> <laughs> something that people can work with. So I want to add a little bit of contrast because I think it's a little bit flat, the image, which I also do with curves. 
So we're gonna lift the highlights a little bit, not too much. Cool. And we're gonna go down with the midtones. Emma in the chat, by the way, saying hi. Oh, Emma's here. Yeah, the boss is in. Hi, the boss is in the building. <laughs> okay, hi. Yep. Also in the chat, by the way, I ought to give a shout out to a few people just while you're tuning yes, your curves please. there. Let's say hi to some of the people that are in. Kirsty, who, by the way, also inverts her mask and paints stuff uh, back in. Kirsty's there. Favorite. Linda's there. The lovely Tim is there. Sean is there. Guten Tag, Sean. Oliver's there. Hi. Hi. Yes. Very good. We've got Steve in. Kiora, Steve. And we've also got General Kenobi. There we go. Little salute from the thumbnail. Yeah, super good. And we've got Stephen is in as well. Caroline is here. Dan the man. Hi, Dan. Dan the man. Dan also, the man. now I realize because I like the shadows, I darkened the shadows a little bit. I, his eyes are too dark again. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go my paintbrush to black. And then remove a little bit of that curves layer from mm. the eyes area because I want the rest to be contrasty, but his eyes are getting too dark if I have that layer on this part of the image as well. Yeah. It's tricky. Harsh light is 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 tricky. It is tricky, but I do like it. I do like the look of it. It's very different from what I do in the studio because in the mm. studio I use bounced light or very soft light. Mm. So from the visual aspect, it's very different, but it does bring, I think it makes the image so happy. <laughs> For lack of well, a it's better Well, it's contrasty term. for certain. Contrasty and that's yeah. kind of happy. I yeah. do like it. I was also thinking if I should add a little bit more yellow to it, if we should mess with the with the white balance a little bit. And people are like, oh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too no. artistic. It's really hard for me not to be like, okay, I'm going to edit this for like two or three hours. Yeah. Because I can't, um, because that's usually what I do. Mm. Um, so I do like this. I want the background, this like green to pop a little bit more maybe. So another layer that I really like is the color balance one. Just because yeah. I, I really like it. And I usually start with the shadows. And then, to be honest, I just play around with it. There's no rule of like what I think there is no rule. You can't do this. You can't do that. Just do whatever you think looks good. Absolutely. Just play around. And once you like it, leave it. And then I usually... Do you know, for years, including my time as a trainer, which was quite a long time, I've said to people, Photoshop has a lot in common with Kung Fu. You can spend your entire life learning Kung Fu and you will never know all of Kung Fu. And it's very similar with Photoshop. No one can know everything that's in there. And just as with Kung Fu, there are many, many different ways to achieve a result. And it's the way that works for you is the best way to do it. Absolutely. And now I'm also a person, I have a lot of layers. And then I'm like, oh, a tiny change. Oh, a tiny change. <laughs> tiny change layers. <laughs> tiny change layers. I'm not the big, big layer change. I'm yes. The small layer change. Yes. And then I'm like, oh, no, went too far. Delete the layer again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, with photos like this, I think it's really nice because you can play around. I mean, obviously, we don't want him to be completely blue in the face. So, yeah. but I do. Never a good look. Never a good look. No. no. And also, something I really like doing um, is that I turn on and off everything I've done so far. Yeah. So I go option, and then I hold li li the, the our visibility layer. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you see, it looks a little bit more yellow. The sun like looks like sunlight. I like it. So mm. the only thing I'm going to do now is my third favorite adjustment layer. It's curves, color balance, and then selective color. Those are my three. I was about to be there. Four. Those are my three. <laughs> those are my three favorite. Those are my three slash four. <laughs> These are my three favorite. 
favorite is just really <laughs> brilliant. Emma, by the way, is saying uh, any highlights from your time in New York City? This was actually one of like this doing this project was one of my highlights because I got to meet so many amazing people. I was I'm so grateful that photography gives me the opportunity to meet so many people because otherwise I would never be able to talk to so many people about what yeah. they do because you can't be the creep that's like hi I just want to sit in your restaurant and talk about your work that's all <laughs> but if you go there and you have a project and you want to do something with it and you want to share it with the world it's so much easier it's so easy to like send an email and be like hi I have this project can I come by and everyone said yes and I got free food <laughs> Oh, wicked. I'm going, yeah. I'm actually going shortly. So I'm just going to make my list there. I'm going to start out at Daughter, one of the restaurants there, because I really like the look of it. They're really, the coffee is so good. They gave me like yeah. four or five coffees that day. I was shaking. Yeah. But they were really nice. And I had a really, really nice time. Um, so yeah, Daughter is great. It's run yeah. by three people. And they have amazing coffee and pastries and really good breakfast. Oh, and they also have pop-ups like wine and stuff like that. So good. So I had a really good time at Aggie's. I even went again yeah. to Jeremy's restaurant for dinner. I went for breakfast and dinner. And it was so good. So, so good. No, I'll see which ones I can get to. Yes. I would also, you should go to Hacks. It's Hacks. not open yet, yeah. but they're going to open next week and it's fine dining. Yeah. It's apparently going to be amazing. Oh, all right. Okay. I was very sad. I couldn't try the food. Okay. I think I'm happy with this. I wanted it to be a bit more yellowy, sunshiny, not so green. Like, what is this? Green, blue-ish tint yeah. that it was before. Brightened up his eyes a little bit. Cropped it done yes i would be happy with this and what i also started doing is that usually i save my stuff on my computer but yep. now i started saving most of my things to my creative cloud at least the images that i've edited and that i like yep. and that i would need again maybe on a different computer yeah so i don't have to save it on a different computer oops different work um so we're just gonna put it in this folder and yes. save it boom yeah, we we have time for one more. We do. Um, so which one should we do? We have this one, which is Hags. Yeah. They're a lovely couple. Or we have this, which is Eric. He owns Ursula, a little place that started with breakfast burritos, which they sold out of his kitchen window. Really? Yes. Or we have this, which is oddly enough, they have yeah. the first like queer bar in like Brooklyn and they opened in April. That's not the first okay. queer bar, but the one of the very new ones. Yep. So in April or this is Dacha, these two ladies, and they are just a pop-up, which is a big thing in New York, which I don't think we have in Germany. I don't know if you have it in the UK. Yeah, we do have pop-ups here. Yeah, yeah, we do, especially around Covent Garden. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I don't think it's that common here. But in New York, they happen everywhere. And it's amazing because that means the restaurant can test if it's actually going to work. Yeah. Out. And actually thinking about it, loads of uh, places like uh, where I live now, we have a, it's a market town. Yeah. And lots of market towns have food festivals. And that's where loads of pop-ups, they, they basically tour yeah. around doing all of these different food festivals. It's cool. Oh, and these are the two guys from Daughter. Do you want, should we edit that one then? If you want to go. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah. Let's do that one then. Let's open it with the photoshops. Okay. We can do a little bit of basic stuff here, I guess. Yeah. When since we're already here, what would I do? Yeah. And by the way, you, you don't have to you don't have a hard stop at the half an hour thing. You can just carry on. I as thought much you were just gonna over. kick me out at like no, 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 no. I still can it. And I've I've got plenty of time, so I'm good. So okay. Also with this now, since I'm usually not using this, I'm just yeah. going to play around and see. Wow. Sean in the chat, by the way, he's just saying last time he was in M MYC, a tower crane crashed down and smashed three blocks of parked cars. Whoa. What? 
So a, a tower yeah. crane came down yes. and smashed three blocks of parked cars. In, well, at least they were parked in New cars. York City. In New York City, yeah. Oh no! Crazy. I got a I got a job in uh, New York just before Sharon and I <laughs> actually got together. I got offered I want... a job. Yeah, what kind of job? Uh, it was actually working in training. Oh. Um, I got offered a job there and I accepted. And then Sharon and I got together finally, because we've known each other a very, very long time and unsuccessfully got together, but we did. And I was in an awkward position because I suddenly didn't want to go. So I had to go, uh, you know, I said that I would take the job. I kind of, I don't want it. I'm really sorry. Bye. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Thanks. I don't want it to see you. Oh, I could also do it here. Highlights up. Tim, um, wants, Tim says, was that before or after your job as a crane operator? Brilliant. Tim, sharpening. So that is something I don't, I mean, I know I'm, I'm aware of it, but that it is automatically adding sharpening to the images. Mm. Yeah. The raw photos. I mean, it's fine. For these kinds of photos, it's fine. For beauty retouching, it's a no-no. Mm. Take all the sharpening out, for me, at least. Um, That's optics we've done. I mean, oof, I like that. We can press. I'm pretending as if I don't know. Toggle for visibility. Oof, oof. You okay. could try, try also just tapping P on your keyboard. Oh, this is for the whole, like, yeah. uh, preview. Yeah, and it will do the whole, all of the edits, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna open this now. <laughs> cool. And once again, I think he is a little bit too bright because the sun was coming from the left side. Yep. So we're just gonna don't oops. Get a curves layer. Go down with the midtones a little bit. Invert brush X because we have the wrong color at the front. Zooming in a little bit. Look at these two pretty They people. are pretty Oh, I love yeah. it. Um, da, da, da. And we're painting, 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 painting. Also, I'm usually using my Wacom tablet, and now I'm just like <laughs> doing it on my, on my yeah. laptop. So, yeah, I love doing these personal projects that are giving me the opportunity to meet people because all of them were so nice and now I feel like when I go back to New York I have friends which is great and this project hopefully will be published I think I told you yesterday in, in Bon Appetit yeah the, the yes the food food network magazine fingers crossed um, that it works out, that they like it in the end. Oh, I think it's not much, but I like it. Then command zero, so I can see the whole thing. Command minus, because I want to see even more. Let's do one more curves layer, because I want the whole thing to be a little bit brighter. Going down the shadows a little bit. And then just adding a little bit of this yellow kind of look because what I do want is that the photos are consistent within the series. Yeah. So that they have at least one thing in common. And I'm trying yeah. to do that by giving them a little bit of a yellow tint or something that kind of makes people recognize them as part of this. As being a series. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Man, we've got to spend. I, Emma, if you're still listening, yeah, Sophia and I, we've got to spend a little bit of time together in Camera Raw slash Lightroom. They're both the same engine. They're both the Adobe Camera Raw engine, but the uh, there are advantages. So, we, in what you said, in having a series things, we series of things where you want a consistent look. Yeah, there's Adobe Camera Raw can help you with that. I could probably copy paste the adjustments. 
You can, you can, well, there's a, there, yeah, you can. You can actually copy paste the adjustments because all of those things in Camera Raw and in Lightroom are text based, believe it or not. So all they are is a certain uh, parameter, just arbitrarily, let's just say exposure. So it would have parameter exposure equals yeah. and then the value that you've input. And so that's what makes it really quick and lightweight to, to move settings across. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I could have obviously edited this in Lightroom and it would have been, oops, and it would have probably taken less, no, the same amount of time. Yeah. But well, I mean, you, you know, I mean, you, you should still use what you, you're comfortable with, but it, it would be nice, I think, if you had an idea of the of the advantages that you might explore. Yeah, for sure. Plus, it gets so, us on again for another 90 minutes, you know. Yes, of course. Goes. No, no, no. We're totally, <laughs> gonna, we're totally gonna do another Lightroom one and camera raw yeah. one. Yeah. Which is gonna be like another one. Yeah, so exactly. So there we go. <laughs> like advertisement for ourselves. We could even um, like our meeting yesterday, we could even get Buddy in on the act where <laughs> Yes. Show the dogs. That's good for the views. It's good for the views. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do it for the views. Yeah. D um, during our meeting yesterday, Sophia and I had a meeting, and during the meeting. One of my dogs was going crazy at a builder. And so I had to bring him into our meeting. She's like, sorry, sorry, off. hold a minute. On mute, running out <laughs> to get the dog. Um, so as you can see, when I turn on and off the adjustments, I added a little bit of yellow. I mean, and the stuff we've done it in camera raw. So we brighten it up a little bit. Yep. The blacks are a tiny bit more black, which makes the image a bit more contrasty which I do like, and I think, yeah, I do like this. I think this is all I would do to this image. I do like it. Maybe I would crop it a tiny bit more because I think one person, I want them to be in the middle, in the middle. Yeah. Very OCD about that. <laughs> Here we go. Weep. Yeah, happy, 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 happy. Uh, really good vertical. Do you use a lens, baby? Just out of interest. You... No. No? No. Clear. No. What is happening? Here we go. Enter. Oof. Oof. There you are. <gasps> Whack that keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, buddy. Uh, Tim says that Buddy can only be on if he's going to be in the thumbnail as well. I mean, of course. And then we're going to do some clickbait title like Tony last time Adobe Live never coming back or um, Tony sets computer on fire. And yeah, but no. people would just believe those things. They'd just go like, yeah, yeah that no. sounds about right. It would be like dog <laughs> sets computer on fire. <laughs> the, the best clickbait is like in these five easy steps, Sophia shows you how to become the most amazing photographer in the world. In the world. See? Yeah. These five steps will make you the singular most Don't amazing think, photographer in the world. Every time I see that, I'm like, if you actually know that, I would never share it with anyone. No, of course not. <laughs> like five <laughs> steps to become a millionaire. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. why would you share that? Exactly. Okay. I guess uh, now... Do you want me to do one more or should, do you want to? Yeah, no, go, go. Do one more. By the way, okay. Oliver in the chat saying, I see nothing surprising about Tony Set's computer on fire. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and it's not even clickbait anymore. We need something that shocks people. Yes. Really shocks them. Yeah. Tony wears sensible clothes. Oh, Tony is not funny. And then everyone's like, <gasps> oh, no. Tony does. Like, Tim used my serious picture in the thumbnail today. Oh, I, I don't even have had a, a word. picture. No more, no more fly out, flying helmet for Tony. <laughs> so, once again, just playing around a little bit in camera raw, like I've been told to do. It's good. It's good, though. It's good to do new things. It's good practice. Yeah. Let's see what happens when I go with the texture. I know a lot of people go super crazy on the texture and the structure, and then the photos look so so unreal yeah but i know a lot of people that like it because it i think it's because it reminds them of some sort of an instagram filter possibly and then they're like oh i know that that looks mm. good the thing that some people are, are struggling to get to grips with at the moment in my the thing i get the most calls about are is that they're going where are the local adjustments gone i want to be able to paint in my adjustments and it just says masking 
which of course to if you come from photoshop masking means something different mm -hmm. but yeah. in lightroom and in camera raw it means painting through a mask so yeah it's so that's where you add your local adjustments none of that's changed you see that's what i love about this parametric curves yeah that's so good and you can see how the curves adjusting in relation to the rest rather than you putting an arbitrary point yeah. and bending the whole thing yeah which also i think is not that easy on the like trackpad on the laptop no i don't know why but it's so much easier if you do it with a mouse mm. i think <laughs> really i think so yeah there are no mice in here at all. oh actually tell a lie there is there's one from the pc that's on there and I did because the PC when, not very when I edit it, I have the pen in one hand and the mouse in the other hand. Me too. Like, <laughs> Apart from I don't have the mouse off the track part. Oh, that's even better. Open. Last time Tanya made fun of my old like graphic tablet. She's like, you're, you're still using that old thing? I'm like, yes, it works just fine. <laughs> So we're doing four by five, cropping it a little bit. So this is Eric. Like I said, yep. he has a Mexican, like his store is called Ursula. Once again, it's the name of the grandma. Yeah. This is the two places that are named after grandmas. His grandma is from New Mexico and he sells Mexican food. And um, he started in the pandemic because he lost his job. And yeah. then he knew he could do really, really good breakfast burritos. So he started selling them to friends, yeah. like just from his home. And then they recommended them. And then he started selling them outside, of, like through his window because pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then they were so good that he had a pop up. And then that was so good that he got an investor. And now he has one of the most like, like the queue is super long. If yeah, you're yeah. there, not on a certain time, you will not get a breakfast burrito and people are queuing like two blocks down. It's amazing. Yes. Amazing. I said to Sharon the other week um, about us starting a starting a small, I said like a small van yeah, doing food because one of my grandchildren invented something with plastic food. You know those things that, that he's only four. But you know those little bits of food that kids play with and some of them clip together so you can make like a hamburger and that stuff. Yeah. He made the pizza burger. So it's essentially <laughs> a pizza. I think I mentioned this on stream just the other week. He put a little tiny pizza and then put the rest of the burger on it and then just the bun on top, you know, the top of the bun. Mm. And I think pizza burger's got, you know, it's got mileage. I think people would people would buy pizza burger. Oh, for sure. There is let's start like a van. I think I've seen a pizza burger before, to yeah. be honest. I don't want to burst the bubble, but. Oh, have you really? Oh. I think so. I, I think you can buy them here. Yeah. In, like the frozen aisle. Yeah. You know that rolling eyes emoji that you get, for, you know, the yellow one with the eyes like, going, mm. you know, that sort yeah. of thing. That yeah. Sharon's face momentarily gets changed into that emoji. <laughs> when, when, when I say these things, it's just like, plonk, there goes rolling eyes emoji. And she doesn't even say anything. She just nods and goes, yeah, 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 that's yeah an sure, idea. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about, I could also use the dodge and burn tools to brighten up these parts, to be honest. You could, it's going to yeah. be so, so tricky though, isn't it? In that. The light. Very tricky. Yeah. But I mean, you could try. I could, but Do that it. would take a bit too long, I think. Also, these shadows are really harsh. I, once again, I was not paying attention to the lighting setup or... <laughs> <laughs> actual taking the photos he was mm. one of these people that are like i have two minutes um so we better make this quick and i'm like quick. okay can you please just sit down in front of your store and i'll take one portrait i think yeah. i have like literally five images of him and this is the one we are gonna go with um but once again it's not about the photo itself it's about the mm. content and he is amazing he is really great so if you're Ooh. ever in new york whoops tim's I, just reminded me of something what about shadow highlight shadows and highlights in the adjustments in the one that i just painted in uh, no 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 in the image image adjustments so image menu and then adjustments yes you've got shadow and highlight and that actually can sometimes help so just down to adjustments yep, and, yep, yep, oh, sorry up a little bit up a bit up, up, up. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, and shadow highlights just down, down, and down there. 
that can sometimes help. There are further options if you need them. Yeah, but you can lift shadows. And you can and also... Oh, whoopsie. Yeah, you're painting the mask at the minute, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm like, whoopala. Thanks, Tim in the ear roll. <laughs> I was, just, I was, I was like, like, there's nothing happening. Right now. Not happening. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Um, here we go. Have Oops. a watchful, Tim. But there you go. Look, can you see that? Yeah. I mean, okay, it's an adjustment that you might you might be better off painting in. Yeah, I would. I would have to like. I would yeah. double the. But you can lift the shadows a bit, and still keep some realism. Thanks, Tim. By the way, that's a good tip. I'd forgotten all about that. Look, yeah. if we do like <laughs> General Kenobi saying, uh, use the show more options because you've got things there. We can balance it off. It's not so hard an adjustment. Yeah. So just down the bottom, you see the checkbox there. It says show more options. Whoop. Yeah. Right. Then you've got, you know, other things outside of just the flat range. Yeah. I don't, I don't use this at all. I, probably because I don't take photos outside. But I'd forgotten much. about it. And this came in, if I recall correctly, this appeared in Photoshop CS2. Oh. <laughs> like, you know. Where so it's been you around. probably weren't even, you weren't, you, you're probably only on the planet just at that point. <laughs> probably. So it's yeah. been around for a minute. <laughs> it's been around for quite a while. For quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good thing. I would try. I will work yeah. with that a little bit more. So, but for now, I think I will hand it over to you. Okay. I will save this. Come on. Shift, come on. S. Boom. Boom. Save to the cloud. Save. We're going to save everything before we stop because yeah. I'm very scared of losing yes. my images. And then um, do you just want to kick me out of the share your screen thing? Yes, I will do that right now. <laughs> Here goes the out kicking and boof. Boof. <laughs> and then the whole stream collapses. We're like, oh, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. There we are. Okay, let's do let me close my Photoshop. Not the Zoom. Don't close the Zoom. No, don't close Zoom. We need that. That would be bad. Needs to be there. Imagine. I would be like, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> so let me go to our live stream. So okay. I will watch the chat now, people. Yes. I'm in Photoshop here with some of your images. I'm just going to quickly uh, retrieve something else that I need here, which actually I should have done earlier. Um, which open up, please. Thank you very much. Yes. Right. I called this list. So I'm just bringing this down onto the screen. This is in a Google sheet. Okay. And I called this list NYQ restaurants, mm. which I kind of hope is all right for me to call it that. Yeah. Um, because you sent me a nice list. Yes. Of things. Okay. And then I turned them into, uh, so they were basically, you did the, the name, the address. Uh, then you gave me uh, the web address and then their Instagram because they're all on Instagram, which is really, really good. Uh, and so just to show you what I do with that before I work on anything else is uh, I go and turn it into a spreadsheet like this because that way I can work more easily with it and make adjustments. And then uh, I turn the bits I need from that spreadsheet into uh, another format. So what I can do, in fact, I could try opening up uh, something from my desktop. Let me just open a file just here and we'll go to this one. Let's try this CSV. I'll just show you how I did this. So I'm just going to open a, a comma delimited uh, version mm -hmm. of that or a comma limited uh, version because all I actually needed for this was the address. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the name. I didn't need the, the tags for their Instagrams or whatever. We can use that. Uh, in just a little bit okay but the only thing I did need to add in a couple of places so I bought the data in as you're going to see in a moment 
into something else. Now, some addresses it picked up really easily, but this one, for example, 163 First Avenue, New York City, yeah. it, it wasn't able to read that properly because mm -hmm. that NYC, that abbreviation didn't work in there. New York it gets, right? Mm -hmm. But NYC is sort of an unofficial abbreviation. It's not uh, cartography friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to just change that to New York and I also put the zip code in. Okay. And in fact, there was there was one other one that needed the zip code. But in terms of presentation of data, Sophia, mm -hmm. you score top marks. Thank yeah, you. Because it's loads better than the garbage I usually get. <laughs> <laughs> I just copy pasted it from their website. Yeah, I know, but it was still a better copy paste than some of the things. I was copy pasting and I was like the 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 names were in bold. Yeah. And it was all in the same order. Yeah. You know, it was website, Instagram account, address, website. Yours Instagram was nicely account. formatted though. So you went to the trouble of formatting it for me. And sometimes when people send me things that they want me to work on frequently, I get a complete dump of stuff that I then have to trawl through for ages. And unfortunately, because of the way they structure some things or don't, yeah, it is almost always manual. There's so many things, there's only so much you can do using queries to get it sorted out. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that um, there are people who would argue that point, but anyway, let's go ahead then and go to Illustrator because this is what we're going to do to generate this map. Okay, now I could go to the trouble of drawing a map based on another map which is technically a bad practice um, if you're publishing it, uh, depending on the level of detail that you're going to use. But here I'm actually going to generate one from that data. So for that, in Illustrator, I have an extension, right? ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud, which will open up like so. I'm signed in. Okay, and in fact, you can see there's actually data already here, which is very odd because there shouldn't be. It should be purged. Hmm. Do you know what? I'm going to very quickly quit Illustrator and just relaunch it. Like so, because there's something not working properly just there. That's the magic of a live stream, people. It's, it is it's the magic, and it shows that we're live. Yes, this is yeah. not rehearsed or properly... No, or even anything else. <laughs> I, wanted, I was about to say plan, but it yeah. is planned. So we I get, am taking it back. We get a quick, we get a quick meeting. We we that's had invaded a by a Dachshund. <laughs> we had a meeting about this, and I sent over all the information, perfectly yeah. formatted. A little bit late. I felt so bad that it took. No, off. you were good. It was all good. Okay. It was all good. Right. So let me just show you what. Uh, so this is an extension which you can use uh, for free. ArcGIS oh. Maps for Creative Cloud. Don't search for it on Adobe Exchange because that version is out of date. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you should do is just search Maps for Creative Cloud. Go to the Esri website uh, and download it from there. And they have three levels of membership that you can have. So there's a free membership which means you can just make stuff uh, for uh, for personal use only. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can explore how using a GIS service with Maps works with Creative Cloud, and you can use it in Photoshop and in Illustrator. Um, then you have what's called a Plus membership, which gives you access to some of the GIS systems, geo geospatial information services, yeah or systems uh and uh then there's an enterprise membership which is you know sort of big level stuff with big things big data science stuff that you can do uh, i have a plus membership here which costs me about 10 quid a month i think it is uh, for that and for the levels of most maps that i create it's a, it's a very good thing to have so there are various different ways you can work with this. You can zoom out if you've got a particular place, you know roughly where it is geographically. Then you can draw an extent on the map. You can see here there's an option to draw. And then I could draw a box around something and then start working with that. However, we have data. So I'm going to do import just here and then from file. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to navigate to the CSV that we had earlier. Mm -hmm. just here and tap open okay and you can see that that's been analyzed it's actually been analyzed in transit 
So as I've brought that in, that information, that list has been sent to the Esri servers and then back into the application that fast. Whoa. So it knows where all of those things are. And that's a really straightforward list. I didn't have to give it any lat lang. So that's latitudinal and longitudinal coordinates, which you might have to give for some other things. It just yeah. searched on those addresses, which is crazy good. That is crazy good. Also, it's... Steve says there are some really cool stock sites just for maps. There you are. Pick how detailed you want them. Yeah, there are, there are things that do that. Absolutely. There are loads and loads of different things. But the beauty of this is that you can blend data yeah, with your map. So if you're doing something in an infographic, for example, you wanted to produce, you know, like maybe a chloropleth map. So those are things by region sections inside a map. You could do that. Great stuff. And for a friend of mine, and if Tim just goes to big screen just for a second, it's Tony's book of the week. My friend, Sarah Bell, did a fantastic book, Mapping by Design. Sarah's a lovely, lovely, lovely person. Uh, she actually asked me to be one of the technical readers on this book, but I was too busy. I said, yeah, I'll do it, and then didn't. Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, this is next week. Sure, I have capacity next week, and then next week, and you're like, how fast can I change my name and leave the country so nobody knows that I'm not actually going to do it? It's actually doing it. Well, I did actually intend to do it, but it's just workload and all of that stuff. Anyway, back in the uh, software. Thanks for that, Tim, by the way. Uh, so that's showing me the location, right? So this is the map board. This is where I determine various different things. Like I might choose uh, to have a particular document size. I can do all of that from in here, right? So if I go to modify map and output properties, you can see I get these options here and I can go into the, uh, actual document presets from Illustrator if I want to, all of that good sort of stuff. Question. Like so. Yeah. If I would, if you would add one more restaurant, let's say on the upper Upper West Side, which means like higher up in Manhattan, yeah. do that list, would it automatically change here? Right. Probably. You'd have to re you'd have to bring the data back in again. Okay. Which you could either do as a separate overlay, or you could just get rid of the first one and use the second one. Okay. Yeah. Or you could add it, you could add it. There are there are a few different ways you could do it. You could add it as a separate layer. So you could do that quite easily. Uh, you can always redraw this, by the way, as I'm going to in just a second, you're going to see uh, how that works. So once you have that, and you can do lots and lots of other things here, let's just change the base map that we've got. So let's change that to streets. So now we have an idea of the streets. However, we don't see the markers at this particular point, right? Because mm -hmm. they are a separate mapping uh, layer. Okay, so to see that, we need to go into the compilation. And these things are dynamically linked between each other. So if we go to the compilation, and let me just sit, uh, sit, set this to uh, view. So we've got our location data just here. Now, they're difficult to see just These at the moment. Little green dots. They're tiny green dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, style here for that. So I'm going to change the fill to something that we can see more easily. In fact, let's go with one of my fave colors. There we go. There. Now we have an idea. Now, what's happened here is we can only see four of those elements. So the map board actually needs to be a bit larger. So we're going to go back to the map board. And just bring this out a bit like so. Okay, let's have a look now. If we go back to the compilation, so it's just redrawing it. And now you can see that the others, it was guessing based on the proximity mm -hmm. of those things there and thinking, right, these things are clustered. So I'm going to draw the map board where that cluster is just at the moment. But you can see that these outliers here, okay, it didn't quite include those. But now we have them. Yeah. So they're all there on a map board. And we can just go backwards and forwards and tune this just a little bit. This is something I actually really enjoy doing. Is this coming across? <laughs> it is. I'm talking about it. You know, this, this is fun stuff to do. Okay, so now we're looking at that. <clears throat> That's fine. So I think all of the content in there is included. We need to do a few more little things to it, though, before we actually make it usable. First of all, I'm using a topographic base map in the compilation, all right? So based on, you know, how the ground lies, basically. So I'm going to choose a different base map. 
and I'm going to use one of the vector street maps. Okay, so that's just going to draw. So that just pops off the server, brings back the tiles. You can see it's still drawing, and there you are. Now we've got a vector version of those maps, which is good because it makes it very easy to change things. Additionally, we're going to need some other information in here. So you can see all of the different things here. So let me just go through them. Manage labels. The, there aren't any labels on there at the moment. We're going to deal with those in a second. But you can see other things you can do with a plus membership that you can't do with the standard membership is visualize routes. So if you were trying to work out a route from a location, if you wanted to show a route between all of those points, yeah. If you let's say you were staying up in Manhattan and you thought, right, I'm going to go, you know, just around the corner from the first restaurant here, right? You might say, right, I'm going, I want to go to all of those places today mm -hmm. by cab. You could actually get it to visualize you uh, that route from that information. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Loads it's of like other things you can do. One day trip. Yeah. Even visualize travel times using what? that route. Yeah. So and you would you know. You can change the different kinds of transport, like, trains yeah you can do those yeah absolutely you can do, you can do those you can work out because because that's all of them in from esri has all of that information they have all of those things and esri kind of is a fantastic organization by the way yeah. amazing offices and their founder actually has lunch with employees every day that's amazing and this guy is a multi-billionaire yeah but he goes down at lunchtime and he goes and sits he comes up to a table he sat to the table next to mine when i was there last he sat on the table next to mine just come do you mind if i sit down and they go no that's a great way to lead an organization that is true to do that Absolutely. anyway you can see you can add demographic data and so on but for now because i'm, I'm wandering off chatting about stuff <laughs> how did you add the names so i just i just said manage labels Oh, and it's connected to the Excel sheet. and Yeah, so it's just pulling labels. that down. So you can see if I had other data in there that was useful. So there's only certain things you can include. Yeah. And all of that information is on the Esri website. Tells, or in Sarah's amazing book, Mapping by Design. <laughs> She's so cool. You would love her. She's really cool. She's a, She's a firefighter and a mountaineer and a cartographer she's incredible that sounds amazing i feel Truly like every amazing. time we talk my amazon oh i'm not no advertisement every <laughs> time we talk i buy a lot of books on a internet platform we're not going to specify <laughs> absolutely we'll mention the other one later on if you want the one i showed you in the green room because i think yes. that's a really cool book yes yes we'll do that book recommendations for everyone yes so anyway, it's recognized that in the spreadsheet I provided I provided with it, uh, I could use the address, the name, which is what it is using, and an object ID. So more on that at a later point, uh, not today. Uh, I can then set the size of that. So I'm going to make this quite big because there's only Six. a few of them. Okay, yeah. and you can do some basic stylistic stuff. Of course, this is going to be an Illustrator file. This is much more critical if you're working in Photoshop because it gets baked in. Yeah, oh. but in Illustrator, it's not baked in. And then the position. So at the moment, okay, they are positioned off to the right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to click this center top one on the grid. And you can see now they're over the top. They're like so of the actual marker. Uh, if you were doing something that was more detailed, showing overlapping labels would be important. Mm -hmm. And so it can visualize those for you and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is where uh, that's not gone right. So Let's click. Yeah, sorry. Question. Can yeah. we um, change the distance between the dots and the titles and the label? Yes. yes. And we can do that later. We can do that later. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to do that now. Okay. It's Got something it. we can do later on. Amazing. There. So we'll just hit OK. Caroline says the amount of detail is amazing. Yeah. I think the map looks really good. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's a very, I mean, everything, you, there's even ferry routes on here at the moment, but we'll talk wow. once we get into Illustrator. So this is going to take a minute or two for it to render and deliver to my machine. Yeah. Okay, so when I hit this icon at the top here, now PPI, I don't need to worry about uh, there because this is gonna be a vector map, so that's irrelevant just there, but there are things you can do in terms of settings and whatever. But as soon as I hit sync, yeah, in either place, just here, it's going to go to the server, say, Tony wants this information formatted in this way, in an Illustrator document, please provide it and send it to Illustrator. Okay, and, and that's what it will do. 
imagine right. without that like technology you would have to like first get a map oh, man, and screen, ages zoom yeah. in and find the perfect spot yeah. and ooh. yeah it's really tricky and you know and so i mean, I mean you're always going to get people that say well just use google maps and whatever kind of tricky when you're in a publishing situation yeah because i mean esri map there's a small esri marker down in the bottom here which has to be present when you use it because you're yeah. you, you're using a derivative of their work yeah right? same with google maps but google yeah. are less keen on you publishing their maps mm. yeah it's not that they won't but they're less keen yeah uh, to do that right okay so i'm going to hit sync Okay, it's going to tell me what it's going to do, and it's fine. I'm going to say that's okay. That's and then it starts generating the map. So as this inner wheel is going round and round, that's pulling in all of the different layer contents, and the overall progress is going on in the outer wheel uh, just there. So it's going to take a moment or two. However, if it takes too long, in true how do I do this style... <laughs> we have one, one already. One that I made earlier. <laughs> but it's Look kind here! Of, it's kind of nice to let to let it do it. Anyway, yeah. and I'm going to mention that other book now. Yes, please. Can, because this is in my reading list at the moment. It came into my reading list uh, last week, but I've had a flick through it. And as I showed you in the green room, some of it is so, so funny. Yeah, it's a great book to read. So it is Extra Bold, okay, which is a feminist, inclusive, anti-racist, non-binary field guide for graphic designers. Yeah. Really good book, fantastic illustrations, and so so funny in places. It's done. It's a it's a serious topic. Yeah. But done in a good natured and yeah. well humoured way. I so mean, there you go. I don't know if you know. Wait, I have one book because it talks about the power of design and stuff. Yeah. I'm hoping nothing falls here. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I just like, heard one thump. I have that one too. That's uh, in this section here somewhere. Is it? Is it Michael Beirut's? Yeah, no, yeah. that's that's Ellen. No, no, it's Michael Beirut. Oh, there it is. Da -da -da. Yeah, because I mean, design has so much power, so it's yes. very important that it is ethical design. So yeah. I think books about that are really important. Yes. Okay, now the map yes. is open, and we've recommended. We should have a little books. book club every now and then. Yes, I love this book. Tony's Even though I'm not a book graphic club. designer. Um, <laughs> this I can highly recommend to anyone that Fabulous. does anything creative. Yep. No. Nope. Okay. Really good. good. Right. Meanwhile, back in Illustrator Land, yes. the map has generated. And there it is. It's in as an illustrator document. And Ooh. what are the different layers now? Well, like the dots now and the names? I'm just going to reorganize. <laughs> my workspace here just for a second uh, because this is where it gets really busy because it's giving me all the things i just i didn't ask for anything specifically i just said give me all that stuff i'll choose everything later. please everything please so everything to go once here we go dun, 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 is this the whole map is the dun, whole dun, map in layers yeah can you can you tell the thing that you just want the labels and the dots? Yeah. Okay, good. Because why? Yeah, look, I can just right? turn off a whole layer section, <gasps> like so. Oh wow! You can turn there. on the, on and off the street names, and you can probably just remove streets if you want. You to. can, yeah. So you'll see that as it, as I go through, if I just turn off some of these, then I'm at the moment I'm only getting districts now. <sighs> to work with these normally, yeah. Let me just this this is how I normally work with this on the other system because i don't normally work on this one so this is how i do it i make the layers panel super big <laughs> like so so i can read these fabulous things and by the way i just want to give a nod here to the architect of this uh, who was a great friend uh, clint loveman who unfortunately we lost clint um a few years ago um he was a lovely, lovely man. And this was all his idea about mapic, making, map making, and his team. His team are beautiful, really, really beautiful human beings. But it was essentially his idea to make map making more accessible for graphic designers. So it really was a lovely, lovely man. 
Um, anyway, I'm going to carry on because I'm welling up. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I am. <laughs> but but, anyway, but I think it's amazing because yesterday when you mentioned it, I hadn't even thought about it. But for a mm. project like this, it's super great just to give people an idea. Where is everything? Is it close to each other? Can I go yeah. there in like one day? Like, I think it adds like it's the one piece that was missing from the whole project because we have the names, we have the places, yeah. we have some photos of the owners and the places themselves. And now we have a map that shows where it is. Yeah. And I think that is like completing it, the puzzle a little bit. Yeah, everything you need is there. Yeah. And of course, because this is a vector map, we're, we've got complete control over what we show in the map. We can yeah. we can do everything about the level of detail. So yeah. d let's just get let's just turn the whole labels layer off for the moment. Because yeah. that level of detail on a map like this where we're trying to show six locations in an area. Yeah. Probably isn't necessary just at the minute. Yeah. yeah. We want it. So if you're a resident in this particular area, yeah, or if you're visiting this particular area, just getting an idea of where they mm -hmm. are. We yeah. can use various different tools for that. So I've left those labels turned off for the moment. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the uh, location data labels mm -hmm. just there. So that whole layer, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, so that's telling me where that's coming in. Okay, and then I've actually got the individual layers for those things underneath named <laughs> with the data. So it's really well formed uh, nice. document. Then we've got things, uh, so this is saying it's coming from the uh, North America set of Vector Street Map. If I turn that off, you see suddenly it's like very different <laughs> completely. So we know that most of where we want to work is in this. So do we need uh, populated places? No. There? Well, it's not adding anything. You can see, if I just show you, there's a pointer just around about here. So if we just come just off the river, you can see just around about there, you'll see a dot appear. Yeah. yeah, like so. Is that a few? Yeah. yeah. So that, 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 if we were trying to put something on that said about how many of a certain thing in there, mm -hmm. those would be the points that those things would probably anchor to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we were using survey data, for example, or census data, they yeah. would anchor to these points. So that they would be important for that, but not really important for us. Uh, places of interest. So we've got City Park, the hospital, and the industrial complex. We probably don't need the points of interest or places of interest. So we can turn those off. You can see they're not, we're getting just like a couple of markers just here, just up the top, right? So it's a park, a hospital and an industrial complex. I say, we don't need them. I'm not removing them from the document because at some point someone, you know, if, if you were my client and we were working in isolation from each other and I did this, you might go, hmm, yeah, it's kind of interesting. People might need to know that yeah, that's a good landmark, the hospital. Yeah. You know, people would know they're going the right way. And then I go, okay, boof, click. And I charge yeah. you an hour. <laughs> <laughs> for one click. I just, well, actually, I'd charge you for a quarter of an hour. My lowest billable segment is 15 minutes. Good. And then you're going to be like, I painted the whole map from scratch. Well, I will make that true at some point <laughs> because because I did. That didn't exist, you know, 10 minutes ago. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so, you know, anyway, uh, transportation. Right, so here we can see that we've got roads. Roads are kind of important. However, we've got a choice of what kind of roads that we might use. Are railroads important? You know, they are a good navigation aid, uh, railroads, but I don't know whether we need to show them at this particular point. If I just turn them off, you can see where they're popping in. I think they're adding unnecessary detail mm -hmm. uh, to this one. Mm -hmm. Do we need freeways and highways? Well, I think probably we do. Yeah. Do we need traffic nice. circles? So they're the things you can see on ramps and off ramps just there. Mm. Major arterial roads. Yeah, I think so. And major arterial ramps would be minor arterial. So you can see that's that's dropping down. I think mm. I think that's the limit. Now, local roads. Do we really need those for this? What happened? I think so. I do like, yeah? the, like okay. the New York and the blocks, you know, it shows. Yeah, okay. These blocks, I think I do like them. But of course, if we want to, let's just change the style of those just for a moment. Okay. So if I just click here, okay, on the uh, the proxy mm -hmm. here in the layers panel. So this is an area where I can select everything on that layer. Yeah, you can see how they had styled with a particular stroke 
here. Let's change the color of that. Let's do something really, really wacky. Really wacky, like a sort of purple color, yeah. like so. Okay. And then if I deselect those, boof. Boof. Totally purple. <laughs> I do like it though. Oh, yeah. And no, me too. <laughs> Me too. I'd want, uh, to be honest, for this particular map, I would want to go all out with the colours. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, I really would. <laughs> I would just think, yes, please. why are freeways orange? I don't want freeways to be orange. I want my freeways to, you know, but generally yeah. I'd have a colour scheme. I mean, it's not for actually people to use as like an actual map. It's no, to it's just to give them an idea. idea. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what we would do is we'd then provide the full address of these things. Yeah. yeah, so people could navigate to those points using other systems. It's not like they're going to print this out. I mean, they could, but it's very unlikely they would print it out and walk around New York with a map, you know, yeah. that's like, hi, oh. I'm a tourist. Well, I was in New York. I was wondering because obviously I used Google Maps the whole yeah. time. Like I was using my phone to get from A to B. I would have been so lost. But then I kept thinking, and you can probably answer what have people been doing before they had smartphones? Like you would walk around with a map, but yeah. then in New York, you take the train, you take the subway pretty much all the time. How do you know how long it takes? You just yeah. guess, you just estimate, you just be like, I don't know, let's see. Because even in the subway station, it does not tell you how long it takes yeah. from A to B. And New York is so big, it takes yeah. so long. You think on a map, This looks like, let's say, between hugs, hugs, like all up there in Manhattan. Yeah. To oddly enough, what would you think how long that takes to go there? Yeah, it it, it looks like to me on that, that's what, 12, 20 blocks? Oof, it's oh, no, it's more than that, actually. And yeah, you have to go over the river. Yeah, and over the river. Yeah, one. I'd say 40 minutes. Yeah, at least. Yeah. And then you get off the like off the subway and you still have to walk and you have to also calculate that you're going to walk into the, the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to well, add about extra turns time. Later. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's really, I was in awe of people that had to use ma like actual physical maps and yes. read these, like hold them the right way around yeah. and then not walk into the wrong direction and also estimating the time, the distance, and the time. It's mind-blowing to me. I would be lost without my phone. I know. it's we, We're given so many gifts. Um, ferries, I don't think we need the ferry information. You can see the blue lines in the river there mm -hmm. showing the routes of ferries yeah. around there. I don't think we need that information. Uh, do we need the pedestrian information? That's showing just a few areas of pedestrianism or pedestrianization. So I don't think we need that. Uh, there's administration lines. So they are showing us things like county boundaries. Okay. In fact, that's the only one that's on here. Uh, admin lines. Uh, for, well, in fact, there's two sets of admin lines just there. And they've all gone from that. You can see the county lines just there all as a path uh, then we've got water areas here so if we turn those off for a second yeah question water. yes go ahead sean has a question and i think sean it's a good question. one um can we have the subway stations on there is that a thing i would have needed to put those places in mm -hmm. as a layer so i could have done that at that stage i could have so when we were in the map uh compilation so window many. yeah But I, I mean, if the thing is, if that's important to you, I mean, you can always filter down what you mm -hmm. show. Yeah. But yes, like in all, ones. yeah. So I could have, I could have done that. So when we were in the compilations window, I could have clicked to add a layer. That mm -hmm. data exists and is publicly available. So I could, I didn't need a spreadsheet of those things. I mm -hmm. could actually just type in there subway, mm -hmm. and it would give me the locations of those particular places. Oh. So, okay. so yeah. then, and then I just may, need to get in and filter it down. Uh, yeah. from there yeah. uh, so water areas kind of it some water areas are important not always uh, land use and facility areas right so they'll do things here as you can see like airports hospitals shopping centers university and colleges i say i don't think we need those right now but not for this the yeah park go on. is gone too i like the park okay in that case let's just turn off the airports and yes. hospitals and yes. we'll turn off shopping centers Yeah. And we'll leave you in a college and we'll have cemetery, golf course and animal park. This one here yeah. is a cemetery. 
It's Prospect yeah. Park, I think. Yes. Yes. So you can say actually go down into those things from there. Yeah. But there also, we are. Tim says, I rather have the fairy information. <laughs> Tim wants the fairy back. It's back. There it's you go. For you. Just for you, Tim. <laughs> Just for you, Tim. Yes, the fairy. Ah, fairy information. There you go. Very good. Uh, let's just see if we've got any county lights. So the counties there, those are the actual shapes we're seeing underneath. And that's where it gets. Uh, I did a map once of Manhattan by night. Um, things like that, where I inverted all the colors out, changed all the colors. But this is where you can drop right down into mm -hmm. those sections. Yeah. And then color up, make the, make the map your own really easily so you can see here with this particular path it's got this fill at the moment fairly standard um map fill but if i change that there you go <gasps> that's the by night then. yeah but why is it only changing brooklyn and not manhattan is well because i didn't select both but it's oh. here so manhattan's just there so what i would have, could have done is if i just undo past that just a couple of times yeah i could always go ahead and select both mm -hmm. yeah in fact, am I getting, aha, right, okay, they're separated out just a little bit, just there. Let's, I think there's an additional area, so I'm going to hold down shift and get both, mm -hmm. okay, and then I can change those together like so. Yes. But you can, you can totally make the whole thing your own, have it exactly the way you want it to be. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes. I love it. You know, just hold down shift and move all of those together. Oy. See? Yes. This Get looks your super own. cool already. It's, it's good, right? Yes. You know, it's really, really good stuff. Yes. Okay. So we've got those things. So that's given you an idea of what goes on here in terms of layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we can go ahead and do some work. Uh, on the actual content themselves. So I'm just gonna double click uh, my layers there. And actually, if I repark them at the very top, it will make them easier to just fly out like so. Repark. Yes. Repark. Repark. <laughs> this is the professional term. It is. Reparking your layers. Repark your layers. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you're yes. going out this evening, always remember to repark your layers. Very important. And you're before helping you go, everybody else. Before you go to sleep. <laughs> exactly. And don't have nightmares. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> don't let the bed bugs bite. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've done all of this work here. Yeah. In the last whatever, uh, however long, you know, sort of 20, 30, however many minutes. However we've minutes. In, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Tim just said, put your panels in an upright position. <laughs> there you go. And put the mask on you first before you put it on your kids. Oh, Matt, Stop it's so me. amazing that you say that. There is a graphic in here. The social dynamics of confidence, right? Showing a female pilot. And you can see that this one just here, which uh, says, in the event of a sudden loss of confidence, assist others in restoring mutual trust and respect. <laughs> That's cute. So good. So good. Anyway. Oh my god, there's so many flight attendant puns, puns we could do with like masks. Yeah. And stuff like yeah, that. the exits. Yeah. But we're not gonna, we have stuff to do. We have, we have got stuff to do. <laughs> emergency exits. Yeah, and remember. Command Z, the emergency exit. <laughs> remember, your nearest exit could be yes. behind you. Right. So I'm going to just select one of these labels here. That's I've just clicked on the label to select it. Yeah. I want to get all of the labels. Now I could actually go ahead and just click now on the proxy and it's collected me all of those labels. So I now have that as a selection and there are loads of different ways. Okay. That I could change that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to use the typeface Gilbert. I'm going to use the um, bold black version here. We do have, a color version as well. In fact, we could try out the color version. I mean, I'm looking at the map right now. I just don't know if that would be too confusing. Then I'm like, can we have the map in, do we then have to have the map in black and white more, like more desaturated a little bit? 
Well, we could do that. We could, we could, we could take color out of the equation completely if we wanted to do that. And then and use a, the color font. We could do that. In fact, there's a couple of ways we could actually approach that. You know, uh, there's the quick way and the less quick way. There's the easy way. <laughs> there's the easy way and the not uh, easy way. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I am going to add another uh, layer at this particular point here. Oh my God. Layer, layer 67. 67. Sounds like a club. Hey, <laughs> hey Sophia. Wanna go to, we, wanna are go to layer to la we are going to layer 67. You want to come with? Yeah. You want to hang? <laughs> Everybody goes to layer 67 on Fridays. <laughs> also, we have another one. Tim says, in case of sudden loss of motivation, coffee mugs are stuffed under the seat. <laughs> oh, my God. I do love these. Do we, can we have some more? About we should. The we should do our own guidebook. Car. Our own guidebook. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to change uh, the opacity of this layer to color like so. Doof. There we go. So that's the very quick way. Yes. Uh, so all I did was I created a black rectangle. Yeah. On layer 67. Yeah. And then targeted the appearance for this layer and yeah. changed it to color. And because it's black, that just has the effect of making everything underneath it. it top hint if i wanted to colorize it some other different way then i could just change the color of the rectangle like that Ooh. it's cool right <laughs> it is so cool and so simple why would you show us the long way <laughs> exactly well i wouldn't because okay. that's why i do wednesdays on adobe live <laughs> This is why we have 90 minutes to show you the fastest and quickest way to fastest, do it. Quickest ways. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to lock layer 67 so I don't inadvertently uh, work with it uh, beyond what I want to do. Let's go ahead and make that big. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to select uh, that label and I'll do select same uh, font, family, and style. These are fairly new. These ones down here, these text options, they were introduced within the last year. Uh, you always had uh, select type objects, mm -hmm. uh, but this one gives you parameters for selecting types. So if I said select everything that is using the same font family, style and size, boof, then I get all of those labels. It's amazing. Now let's try Gilbert. Also, the reason why we're using the Gilbert Baker font is because Gilbert Baker was the like guy that designed the pride flag in 1973. Yes, I, I was about to say 70 something. <laughs> 70 some odd. In fact, I've got that information on screen somewhere. Somewhere I have it. Have the original look. pride flag had more colors than the one we use today, though. Really? Yes, it had two more colors that are not in like in the mix anymore. Now we have six colors. And yeah. The initial one had eight, and I think it was a very dark, dark red, and it was yeah. a very dark, dark blue or some or something like that. Yeah. And then they realized that dyeing the fabric in this one red or pink it was was too difficult, so they took that out. Yeah. And then they realized, oh no, now we have an uneven number of colors, and they wanted for a pride parade to divide them. So they were like, oh no, we have to take one other color out, so we have six now. This is literally what happened. Why would oh, we okay. from eight to six? Just because of practicality. It was too expensive to dye the fabric, and then they wanted an even number. That's the whole story behind it. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes, um, yes. Not entirely sure why I can't change the size of that type. Let me just do that here. That's interesting. Oh, that's good. Yeah. oh man, I was it's all right. I was thinking about. <laughs> I was secretly thinking about another software. Uh, <laughs> let's try that let's try that again this time with feeling <laughs> <laughs> let's try it again and this time make it work okay <laughs> absolutely all right so i'm going to make that a bit larger 
Yeah. Now we can control, of course, this is at the moment, right? These are going to be a bit of a, what I would like to call um, a poor feast for the eyes because there's a lot going on. Yeah, they're not things. that easy to read, to be honest. They're not that easy to read. But I mean, if this was a, an actual poster display map, that would be, in a way, Sophia, that's kind of cool. Because people but, come closer because they can't read it? Well, no, because people are more likely to retain information if it's slightly more difficult to read. Is it so? That is so. That is the current thinking on things like that. It always used to be that, you know, it used to be clarity over yeah. all other things. And then research showed that actually if you make something just slightly more difficult to read, you're much more likely to, to hold on to that information. Interesting. I, do you know what? I am going to go with this. I'm also going to nudge this up just a tiny bit here. Now, yes. that's going to give me a slight problem in a couple of places, but I'm not worried about that just at the moment. So what? here's what I'm going to do. For each of those type instances, I'm going to add... Okay, let me just get my appearance panel open. I'm going to add a new fill, right? Like so. Okay. Ah, now is that going to work on a color, color thing? We'll find out in a moment. Let's just find out now. Uh, so if I go to color, it might behave differently with a color font. What should happen is all of these things should have now gone black. The whole font? Yeah, the whole the whole thing there. Let me just do an individual instance. So let me try this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Tim yeah. says that's what I always said in school to excuse my bad handwriting. <laughs> if something is a little bit difficult to read, it's better to memorize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's a good way to do it. Okay, this is yeah. Okay, this is sort of working. Yes. Okay, but I need to change the color there. I'm just going to call in one of the default uh, swatch sets here and just make white. that yeah. white. You see, I think that keeps. Yes. So I'm yes. just going to bring this one up like so, position it manually. Yeah. Um, it does change. It sh tells me a bit of information about the way that this, this typeface blends mm -hmm. uh, itself. But let me just see if I can take that appearance and just drop that onto other text objects, sort of. That sort of works but not completely. So now that I know that it does work, I'm just going to undo that beyond there and beyond there. So I'm going to select all of those type objects again. Let's just make sure their appearance is working properly. All right, okay, this says it's still got the extra fill. That one doesn't. So we'll get rid of that. I want them all to be the same to start off with. Mm -hmm. Right, good. Let's do select same da, 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 same font family style and size. Let's add a new fill to those. Let's make that fill white. Are you enjoying this, by the way? I am. I love spending time. I am. This is so great. I never thought this would be so. I mean, it doesn't look easy, easy, but I'm very impressed how fast it is. How fast it is oh. to create this map, and then it looks so good. I love it's, it. Um, it's, I'll tell you what it is easier to do, and that's make changes. Yeah. Look, it See, looks like uh, so much fun now. Like the map looks like a lot of fun, like places you would actually want to go to just by looking at the map. <laughs> Be a good, I mean, we could, we could, we, I'll, I'll keep hold of this. I'll actually I'll do a quick save as well while I'm, while I'm at it. Um, I'll keep hold of this because we can properly style this out. If you want to use it in your project, you are. I mean, I would love that once it's. Yeah. This is a bit more finalized. And I might just move the label for hags just over to the right hand side of the marker. Yeah. In fact, we could do that because, you know, we started out with with one thing. Visually, we could make this more interesting. And then what we could do is we could dot some photos around yeah. in uh, in different places. Or if this would be the poster of the project, we could add the title of the whole thing like in the middle because there's not anything there's, yeah there's on. not a lot going on here so we could yeah. yeah we could introduce a shape in the middle there there's yeah lots of different ways we could approach it you know because people who were in that area will be able to map match this up yeah to a map so it wouldn't be so critical that we showed no. you know 
yeah. this docking area, for example, it's like not uh, not a thing at all. But yeah, so we, we've got the starting points of it anyway. We've got yes. essentially we've got the map, which is which is the main thing, and then we can work out the design. So how we're going to drop something on there? I don't think it should be regular uh, at all. In fact, what I'm going to do is just create quickly another new document. I'm going to go to art and illustration and poster. Let's go to an 18 by 24 poster, and then I just need to work out where this is because I think. This one's been saved to Adobe Documents. Perfect. Okay. Just need to know, needed to know where that was. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is place this illustrate or the original illustrated document into uh, into another document. So I go to documents and Adobe and that one. There we go. So I've got it just there. Let's bring that in and place that like so. It's vectors. So yep. we don't have to worry so much about. We can make it as big as we want. We can make it as big as we want. We can make it as big as some of those places. <laughs> yeah. Billboards. Oh, my billboards. God. When I was in New York manifesting really hard, there's one billboard in Soho. It's owned by Calvin Klein. And I want that one of my photos will be on that billboard. I'm putting it out there for the world to hear. So one of my photos will be on the billboard in Soho on this like CK. Thing. Yeah. Just saying it now, so then people can roll the tape later. And be like, we oh, can manifest that. Years we ago. can make that happen. Yes, I know. Absolutely. If there's someone out there, there's really? someone from Calvin Klein. Please give me a call <laughs> to existence. Yes. Well, you know, all sorts watch these things. You know, it, it, it's it's good stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna someone, just know someone. Let me know. If you know someone, I know someone who knows someone. <laughs> yes. If Just your as an idea. Second cousin knows someone, please. <laughs> your second cousin, twice removed. Yes, yes exactly. So, please you know, let them give me a call. Yes. Let me just. I'm just dragging a bunch of shapes just here, just for the minute. Yes. Right, just to give you an idea of, I wouldn't want it to be uh, regular at all. The other stuff's on a locked layer, so I could bring those things together. Get my. And then just work on these different corners here and just mess with their cornerness. It has to be around ish because the font is so round. Yeah. It's got to be sympathetic to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Also, just to give you a heads up, you have three more minutes. I think I should have warned you before. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I've got my phone's just next to me. So okay. I, 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 I got it. But I do appreciate the heads up. Okay, good. But yeah. And we could go ahead and let's okay. just type something. Uh, give me a title. It's called Queer Food Stories. It looks like a really funky spaceship. It, it's well, you know, it's because it is. It's it from is. my home. It's from my home world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the transportation you could take to go to these places. Yeah, and in fact, I would actually park that. In the middle there, I'd have a little bit of a preamble above the top of it. Yes. You know, I mean, I'd create a shape that was more sympathetic yeah. uh, there. So we'd have a little bit of a preamble just here. And then maybe like listings little, like just two there. sentences about the project. And their Instagrams. We put their Instagrams in. In fact, we could drop Instagrams underneath. Okay. We could put a little Instagram because they, apart from that area there where it's a little bit busy, but we yeah. could work that out. And if it was an interactive map, of course, we could make them tappable. Clickable. Yeah. Tappable. Clickable. Clicky tappable. Interactable. Interactable. Nice new word. I love it. Oxford English Dictionary, if you're watching. <laughs> like and subscribe. Please. Interactable. <laughs> anyway, there we go. There we go. We, we have, have the map. Something. We have the project. And we're yes. right on time. Yes. Like one more minute. So thank you so much for creating the map. I'm mind blown. Honestly, thank I have you for no bringing idea. the project. What a yes. great project. Yeah. Yes, I will let everyone know when it's out. And yeah. I hope everyone goes and checks out these places. If you're ever in New York, I highly recommend all of them. It's great food, great drinks, great coffee. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your week. We will yes. be here next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I hope I will be back soon. Not yes, waiting another too. year to yeah. be back with you. <laughs> 
And thank you so much again. Thank you to everyone watching and have a great day. Thank you. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Thank you.